Hi again, everyone. Ed the Finance Guy. Thanks for tuning back in. My goal in this channel is to be educational. So I'm hoping that it helps as many people as possible. The topic today is going to continue to revolve around income tax time. July 15th, right around the corner. People have to know exactly what to do when they file a return. And what we're going to talk about today is gambling, wins and losses. Now, if you buy, sell stocks with any brokerage firm, you're going to get a 1099 at the end of the year. It's going to list all of your trades and it's going to show exactly what your sales were. At the end of the year, you're going to get that statement. You're going to look at the sales section. The number is going to be $90,000 or whatever it is. That number has to be on your tax return. If you forget to put that number on your tax return, the IRS is going to send you a letter saying, we got notification that you sold stock for 90000 You didn't report any buys, so we're assuming it's all profit. Of course, that's nonsense, but what they want you to do is they want you to amend your return, redo your return, file a 1040X, and put down exactly what you paid for the stock, what you're selling the stock for, because the difference is going to be taxable income. So, for example, you sold $81,000 worth of stock, you bought $90,000 worth of stock, and you have a loss. So you want to be able to show on the Schedule D of your tax return all the stock trades, the stocks you bought or sold, the amount you paid, when you sold it, when you bought it. If you hold a stock for less than 12 months, it's called a short-term profit or loss. If you're selling a stock and you hold it for more than 12 months, it's called a long-term profit or loss. Now, if you have any profit, you have to declare it on your return. They do give you a lower tax rate to pay taxes on these stocks, on the sales. But remember, if you have losses, you can't write off the whole loss one shot. So if you have a $10,000 profit, you got to put it on the return, pay the taxes right away. But if you have a $10,000 loss, the most you could write off is $3,000 this year, and you carry it forward to the next year and so on. Next year, if you have profit, you could offset the profit against the gain. So that $10,000 loss, you can't write off one shot. It's got to be $3,000 this year. And then next year, you have a $5,000 profit. You could offset that $7,000 loss to the $5,000 gain and actually pay no tax on that money. So remember, the losses are, only, are capped at $5,000. The gains you have to pay taxes on right away. Now, what if you hit lottery or the daily number or a horse race? you're gonna get a 1099G. And remember, whenever you get a 1099 from a brokerage firm, from your employer, a copy will be sent to the IRS. So you never should be thinking, well, I wonder if this is even reported. Once you get a 1099, there's three copies to that 1099. One goes right to the IRS. The IRS inputs it in their computer. When you file your return, they wanna make sure that the 1099 they got is on your return. So they're always gonna know if you get a W-2 or a 1099. So you have to be honest and show the 1099s. But now you get a 1099 from a casino. You hit a slot machine for $1,000 or you hit the daily number for $2,500. You're gonna get a 1099. You have to pay taxes on that money. Now it's regular income. So what you should be doing is keeping track of all your losses. So for example, you win $1,000 at a slot machine playing in a casino. You should contact the casino at the end of the year and say, listen, I've been gambling here all year. I have a card where I keep track of my points. It also keeps track of how much money you made, how much money you lost. Can you please send me a statement showing how much money I lost this year with you? So the casino will go into their computer and they'll print a form that will say that you lost $950. So you could offset that 950 against the thousand. So if you have a thousand dollar win and you have a $950 loss, it'll offset. The problem is you have to be able to itemize and show the losses versus the gain. When you do this, you should also keep track, keep a book, keep a calendar showing when you went, how much money you lost. If you're playing in the stock market, it's different than this type of gambling. If you're playing horses, you got to keep track of what you played, try to save the tickets, try to save the program, keep it in a log, in a journal expect to get audited. So have all the receipts ready. And people don't get audited right away. Sometimes they get audited two years later. You're not gonna remember what you did two years ago. So it's good to keep a separate journal showing all the losses so you could offset the losses versus the gain. If you can't itemize, you're out of luck. So the idea is here, you're gonna keep track of your losses. You wanna offset losses versus gains. Now we're gonna speak about 
professional gamblers. So if you're a gambler who plays fantasy football or you're playing in a poker tournament and you're a professional gambler, now you have to prove you're a professional gambler. What is a professional gambler? It's not somebody that goes to the casino twice a year and plays in a tournament. It's someone that generally doesn't have a job because what they're doing is they're trying to make gambling their job. They're playing in 20, 30 different tournaments. They're joining different fantasy leagues and they're concentrating and they're being honest saying, look, this is what I do for a living. I'm a gambler. I play sports. I gamble on poker tournaments, fantasy leagues. These are my ways of earning a living. Now, again, keeping a log on anything you do, keeping business expenses in a log, keeping how much you make in a log, what are you paying for the tournament fees? You're entering a fantasy league, $1,500. That's an expense. So if you keep track of all these income and expenses at the end of the year, you're gonna file a Schedule C. A Schedule C is a business income. So if I had a pizzeria and I wasn't incorporated, I would also file a Schedule C. On the Schedule C, I would list all the 1099s I got from the tournament I won, from the poker tournament I won, from the fantasy league, whatever income you got from gambling. Even when you don't get a 1099, you're technically supposed to put that on your return, pay taxes on it. So now on the Schedule C, you're gonna list your income. And then underneath, you're gonna put all your expenses. Your expenses could be staying at a hotel in Vegas because you're playing in the tournament in the World Series of Poker. So you're staying there six days, you have to pay for a hotel. That's a deduction. Anything that you do in order to make money gambling is a deduction. If you have losses, on your business, as long as the numbers are not crazy, you could offset it against any other income that you might have. But the IRS really doesn't take kindly to this type of profession. So you really have to keep perfect records. That's the most important part, is that you have to keep impeccable records of when you went, where you went, what you did, how much did you spend, here's my receipts, here's my hotel receipts, food receipts. I have to buy journals or I go online and I wanna pay for a program to teach me how to play poker better, could write that off. Anything that has to do with your income being a professional gambler. They say ordinary and necessary business expenses. So anything that you can think of that will help could be uh, internet sites that you go on that you need in order to perform to get better at playing poker, you could write that off. But again, keeping receipts, keeping a journal, making sure you have everything listed is the best way to get through any kind of an audit. Just a quick topic to help people that are professional gamblers. Make sure you keep your records. Make sure you keep your journals. Keep it for more than three years, even though that's the cap. They say keep it for three years. But the IRS audits people within three years. Try to keep it for five years. This way, you'll be able to defend any deductions you have. I'd like to thank Mike Vance from PA who suggested this topic about gambling. I do appreciate the suggestions and I will listen to any suggestion I get. Thanks for tuning in again. Please like, share. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Email me at ed1959 at usa.com. Remember anything you hear on this channel is for a broad group of people. Everybody's situation is different. If you have any direct questions about your situation, please contact me. I will definitely try to help you. Ed the Finance Guy is saying, be safe, be smart. See you next time.